everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these cute little purses. So you can see I've used a shop bought clasp, loads of room in there for all of your coins. I'm going to show you how to attach your crochet work to the clasp. Now as you can see on the bottom we are going to be working in the spiral and then you can make these as tall or as short as you'd like. These would make perfect gifts because as you can see you can lay them nice and flat so that you can send them through the post. So this is what you'll need. Now I must explain originally I wanted to use this Lily's Sugar and Cream. Um, it is an Aran weight yarn, which I believe is a size of four, and a four millimeter hook, which is also a G hook. Now, I always use my Clover and More hooks, they're my favorite ones to use. Now, the tutorial of the actual purse body. I have used this Lily's Sugar and Cream. Now, this, if you need to know, is um, the colorway is Robin's Egg. But once I had done the whole tutorial for the whole body and then I attached to the purse clasp, I just thought this came out rather big and bulky. So I will show you um, what it actually came out like in just one moment. Now, originally I used Shape Years Callista cotton, 100% cotton again. This is an Aran weight yarn. Um, so these two weights are meant to be the same, but I believe this is a lot more chunky. So um, the tutorial for the actual purse, I have done in this, there is nothing wrong with that the tutorial. Stitch count and the row count is exactly the same. So just follow along with that tutorial. But then when we go to attach to the clasp, I then changed to this lovely green colour here and you can see um, the finished purse is the same size. Now this is again Shape Years Callista Cotton. It is in the colourway Kiwi and I will tag that name down below. It's quite a mouthful and it's not spout as you would say. So I'm going to tag this yarn down below. Now what I want to do now is just show you how this Lily's Sugar and Cream turned out. So, I mean, it's quite nice and big, so it's more of a sort of small makeup bag size. But I wanted it to be this size. And even though these two yarns should be the same weight, this obviously wasn't. So... <laughs> Just so there may be a little bit of confusion because in the tutorial up until, as I say, we um, sew onto the clasp, I will be using this yarn, but you just follow along. So any Aran cotton should just be fine. Now, as I say, I'm using a four millimeter hook. I need my stitches to be nice and tight as it's a purse. You're going to need a small pair of scissors. You're also going to need a darning needle to darn in your ends. You'll also find it helpful to have a couple of stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers, you could use safety pins or just a piece of thread to mark your rounds. Now also to sew my clasp on, I used the same colour in an embroidery thread. Now don't worry, you can use just a normal cotton. You could use a contrasting colour, it's just that you will see these stitches. So I just chose to use the same colour. And then with that I need an embroidery needle. So the most important part is your clasp. Now I was gifted a set of these a few years ago so I cannot find these particular ones anymore but there is something very very similar on Amazon and I will pop the link down below. Now I have measured across, this is approximately eight and a half centimetres which is about three and a half inches. 
I have a clasp, if you can see, that has the holes going around. Okay, so on both sides, you will have holes because we are going to sew our purse onto this. Some of these clasps don't come with the holes and they just want you to glue, but I just find it a lot more secure if we actually sew our purse onto these. Now, I have counted around here just so that you, you can get the same clasp. There are 23 holes on each side, okay? And I'm going to make our purse um, to match that. So we are going to start with the magic circle or magic ring, whichever one you like to call it. Now you can do this however you like, but this is the way that I do my magic circle. So I have my tail at the front. I'm going to wrap around those two fingers. I'm going to take my hook, go under, grab that yarn, pull it through. I'm going to take my fingers out and then I want to do a chain with our working yarn. So make sure you have your working yarn do a chain and then that just locks that into place. I'm just going to pull that end out. Now I know that this is a magic circle because when I pull on my tail end that will close up nicely. So we're going to start round one. Working in this circle I'm also going to work over this tail end. We're going to put in this circle six UK double crochets, so that's US singles, so six. So to start with, we're going to push through, grab our yarn, pull through, so we have two, grab our yarn, pull through two, so that's our first UK double. So we need to put another five in, so I'll show you one more time, push through, grab that yarn, pull it through, so I have two stitches, grab the yarn, pull through two. So that's two and that's three. As you can see, I'm working over my tail end. So I need to do four, five and six. Okay, now I'm just going to pull and just close this circle up. Not quite, not quite there because I'm going to start round two first. So we're not doing a slip stitch. We are going to start round two by putting two double crochets in that first stitch. So that's one and two. Oops, trouble with the cotton, it does split. So now we can just close up our centre by pulling on our tail end. So I tend to use a stitch marker to mark the beginning of each round. So if you remember, I've just done one, two in that first stitch. I'm going to put a stitch marker in my first stitch. So I've put two double crochets in my first stitch. I'm going to put two in each of the stitches going around. So that's one and two. This is stitch three. I'm going to put another two, one, two. So you should have three stitches left, one, two, three. I'm going to put two double crochets in each of those stitches. When we get round here, you should have 12 stitches. So I finished round two and I've checked back. So it's always a good idea just to check back and you can look down on those Vs and just double check that you've got your 12. Okay, and then we're going to start round three. So I'm going to take that stitch marker out. In this first stitch here of round three, I'm going to put two double crochets. So that's one and two. 
in that first stitch again I'm going to mark it this is what we're going to do on each round is just mark stitch number one so that we know exactly where we are in the second stitch I'm going to put one double crochet in the third stitch I'm going to put two so that's one and two. In the next stitch I'm going to put one, in the next one I'm going to put two and that's how we're going to do our round three is in the next stitch you're going to put one, in the next stitch you're going to put two, one, two, one, two, you should finish on a one. When you've finished round three, you should have 18 stitches. So I finished round three with 18 stitches. Here we go with round four. You're going to put two double crochets again in that first stitch of the round. And then again in the first stitch I'm putting my stitch marker. Okay now in the next two stitches we're going to put one double crochet in that one and the next one. In the next stitch we're going to put two in the same stitch. Then in the next two stitches we're going to put one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, you've guessed it, we're going to put two double crochet. One and two. So all the way around in the next two you're going to put one in each then you're going to put two stitches one one two one one two and then you're going to be one one and that's how you're going to finish. At the end of round four you should have 24 stitches. So round five, like the other rounds, we are starting in that first stitch with two double crochet. Then I'm just going to again pop my stitch marker in the first stitch. So one, two, that one there. Now I'm sure you know what we're going to do now. In the next three stitches, we're just going to put one double in each of those three. Two and three. In the next stitch, we're going to increase, so we're going to put two doubles. One and two. And then in the next three, we're putting one stitch in each. One, two, and three. Okay, so that's how you're going to go all the way around. So I'm going to increase in the next by putting two, and then you're going to have three stitches in between the increases. So you're going to do one, 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 increase, one, 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 increase, all the way around, you should finish. So you should finish round five on three single stitches. You should have, at the end of round five, 30 stitches. So I finish round five with 30 stitches. So we're going to start with round six. We're going to be doing eight rounds in all with our increases. So starting with round six with again two doubles in that first, oops, sorry, <laughs> stitch. 
nearly knocked you over then. Put my stitch marker in the first stitch. Now in the next four stitches we're just putting one double in each stitch. One, two, three and four. Then we are going to do an increase by putting two stitches in the next stitch. One, two, need to get more yarn. And that's how you're going to go round. You're going to put one stitch in the next four, increase by putting two stitches. Then you're going to do four, two, four, two, all the way around. You should end up by doing the four in a row. So we should end up um, at the end of round six with 36 stitches. So I finished round six and I have 36 stitches. So we've got two more increase rounds to go. So we're going to start round, round seven with our two doubles in that first stitch. Okay, and then you need to guess how many are we going to do before we increase. So we're going to do five stitches. So we just put one stitch in the next five. So that's three, four and five. And then we're going to do an increase. Okay, so for round seven, you're going to do five increase, five increase all the way around. And um, you should finish up with 42 stitches. So here we go with round eight. This is going to be our final increase round. So we're going to start with two. Okay. Pop that one in. And we're going to do it. You've guessed it. You know how this works now. So we're going to put one stitch in the next six stitches. And then we're going to do our increase. So we've done six and then increase one, two. Okay, so all the way around, you're going to do six stitches, increase six, increase six, increase. When you finish round eight, you should have 48 stitches. So I have finished my round eight and I have all the way around 48 stitches. So now what we're going to do is bring the body upwards. Okay, now I'm going to just lay my clasp down. I like my circle to be just slightly larger so that it comes in nicely. Now I have 48 stitches. Um, each side of my clasp has 23 holes. So if I times that by two, that's 46 holes. I allow one for each end, so that's exactly 48. And we have 48 stitches. So when we go to sew, sew into our clasp, we're gonna use one stitch for one hole. So that's just worked out perfectly. If you have a different sized clasp or a different amount of holes, you can just sort of like work out the maths so that when we sew it in, it's just done nice and evenly. So it's not essential, but it's just that my one has worked out just perfectly. So if this is your first time making a purse, this would be a good calculation. That's why I said, get the ones with the 23 holes. Okay, so all you're going to do now is bring this body upwards. I have actually on my turquoise one, 
I actually did 14 rounds, okay, so that's another 14 rows, uh, sorry, rounds. So we are literally in the first stitch, just going to put one double crochet. Then I'm going to mark it and we are now just going to put one stitch in all of your stitches going around. Then when we get back to the beginning, just take that out and then again, just put one stitch. Okay, and we're going to go round and round and round. I'm going to do 14 rounds. I would suggest that you grab a pen and paper, just mark them off or you may have a row counter you can use. So just settle down, watch a good Midsummer Murder, and I will meet you back here when we've done our 14 rounds. Now I thought I'd just hop on here and show you. I am now on my row six, and you can see that we've got a nice little basket shape here happening already. Now I need to do another eight rows, but what I am going to make sure that I have done is that I've now flipped my purse the right way round. So I've got a quite a distinct back and a front to my stitches. My little tail there is down in there, that's on the inside. And I'm just gonna carry on going round with the outside facing me. So just carry on and as I say I will meet you at the end of our 14 whoops, rounds. So I've done my 14 rounds okay now as I said before you don't have to make it this tall you could maybe stop at 12 or even 10 depending on what size you want your purses so it's good to have a little practice with different sizes so all I'm going to do in that first stitch now, <laughs> if I can take my stitch marker out, is just do a slip stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to do a chain one up. I'm going to cut my yarn, oh, sorry, cut my yarn. So I've got long enough end to weave in. And then I'm going to pull that and then just cinch that down. So what we're going to do now is just weave in our ends. So for the tail, I would suggest you turn it inside out. It's just going to be easier. Now, as you can, if you remember, what I did is I worked over my tail. So I just weave in one way and the other way and then chop that one off. But I'm going to show you weaving in with this with this end here, okay? So this is the inside. Okay, so I'm just going to thread my darning needle. And then I'm just gonna use those stitches in here. I'm going to go down and then just try and make it quite neat because you will be able to see this. So what I tend to do is go along. So if I go down to this row here and then I'm just going to catch strands of those stitches going one way. Maybe I'll go a little bit further. So I've gone one way, then I turn and I like to use those strands again, going this way. And then, you know me, I do the rule of three, so I'm going to go back on myself just one more time. Just using those stitches. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're just going to trim off. Now make sure you don't cut your work. You're going to trim off that end. So as I say, I'm going to weave that one in and then we're going to pop this onto our class. What I'm going to do first is mark the end stitch. So if you remember at the beginning, I said I allowed one stitch at both of the ends. Okay, so I allowed a stitch here, 
and a stitch here. Now, as we have 48, I started um, just on one side. I counted 23 stitches in between the stitch markers. So I've got 23 stitches here, put a stitch marker in, 23 stitches, put a stitch marker in, and that comes to a total of 48 stitches. Okay, so these are going to be at either end. So what we want to do is put these 23 stitches onto this clasp. So now you can see we've changed miraculously to this lovely kiwi colour. Okay, so whatever you're using, this method is exactly the same. So what I've done is I have threaded up my thread that I'm going to use to sew the clasp in. I have put quite a large knot there at the end and I've left quite a nice long tail. Okay, now this is quite difficult to show on camera but I'm going to just explain what I'm going to do to start with and then I will try and show you as best that I can. So the idea is that to start with, this is the first stitch on this side and you want to take your needle under the whole of that V stitch. Now some people just like to do the front loop or the back loop. I like to go under the whole of that stitch just because I feel it makes it a bit more secure. And then you're going to then bring your thread up towards you through this first hole. We then take our thread back through the second hole and back through the second V. Then we come up from the third V, up through the third hole in our clasp. Thread comes up, goes back down in the fourth hole, goes back through the fourth V and so on. Okay, so I'm going to show you, it's just quite fiddly to do on screen. What will happen, this will slightly bunch, so if I show you on this blue one, it slightly becomes gathered, but as long as you are moving along stitches and moving along the holes each time, then the maths should work out and we end up here with our last V and our last hole. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. Now you it. also need to make sure that the inside of your clasp is facing upwards. The outside of your clasp is sort of facing slightly down towards you. Okay, so when we close this, we want to make sure that the inside is <laughs> on the inside. So start with it facing upwards. So as you can see, I've gone through my first V. Okay, now this first bit will be a bit loose to start with, but I just want to make sure you're getting the gist of what you need to do. So I've come through that first hole. Just gently pull that thread through. Okay, this will tighten up as we go. So I've identified this here is my next stitch, but to start with, I need to go down through that next hole and then under that V. Okay. Just gently does it. Now I have identified that this is my third stitch, so I'm gonna come up through there and then I need to come up through that third hole. This is going to be my fourth stitch, but I need to go back down the fourth hole first, and then I'm grabbing that V. Now, you may need to just manipulate your purse body just to bring it up to meet the needle rather than trying to 
bend the needle down. Okay, this is my fifth stitch. So I'm going to come up there and I'm going to come up this fifth hole. And then this is my sixth. This is my sixth stitch. So just every now and then just check that you're going through the right stitches. And this is how we will go all the way around. So you can see we're getting this nice running stitch look. Now what I do is once I get to this end, then I go back on myself. So we will have a solid line of thread. But to start with, just so that I know it's in place, I'm going to just do one way and then the other. So I'm coming up under that next V up under that next hole, going down the next hole, locating my next V and going down. So this is how you're going to go all the way to this end here and I will meet you here. So as you can see on my last stitch I have come up, I've caught that last stitch, I'm going to pull it nice and tight and as you can see, my stitch marker is there, marking that one on the end, okay. So now what we're going to do, and you can also see that it's sort of gathered in, so it gives it that nice purse shape. Now what we're going to do is literally just go back on our cell, so we don't have to worry too much about grabbing the right stitch on the way back. We're just gonna go through that hole and I just like to aim my needle down slightly and grabbing some more strands of that stitch there. Okay, and then pull. And then what we're going to do is move along to the next stitch. I grab a, a few of those strands there and then I need to come up the next hole. Now, you may have to just wiggle your needle a little bit there because you won't actually be able to see where you're going. Okay, so now we're gonna go down this next stitch. I point my needle slightly down, so I'm just grabbing more of these strands of yarn. It just means that I'm picking up more of the yarn so it's making it nice and secure on that clasp. Okay so move along to the next stitch and again I'm coming up. Okay and this is what you're going to do all the way back again. So you're just going back through those holes and as you can see, we're now getting a nice solid line of the thread. So carry along, just picking up just a few more strands to make it nice and secure. And I will meet you back here at the beginning. So I'm now back here at the beginning and you can see I've caught all of those holes there. So what I'm going to do with these two ends is just tie them in a knot. Okay, now then you can either weave these ends in and out um, on the inside, because we use the same colour, um, then they're not really going to notice, or you can just snip them off. Now what I like to do just to neaten things up if I've done the ends is just use a darning needle just to sort of like push around the inside of that rim, any strays that are sticking out. So I'm going to weave in these two ends here and then just push the ends up into that, into that channel of the clasp. Then what you're going to do is repeat this on the other side. So I do keep my stitch markers in just until I start my first row and then I take them out. So you're going to do exactly the same coming and going to and fro, to and fro, and then back on yourself. So as you can see, I've sewn them on both sides. 
what I've done is hide the tail of my threads up within this channel here. What you could do if you're worried about those ends popping out, just before you poke them up there, you could put a little bit of hot glue or some fabric glue and then just push them up there and they shouldn't come out. And then there you go. You have your cute little purse. So I think you'll agree that these make perfect little gifts to give to people. These are ideal if you have charity stalls or you have your own little online shop or stall. These make ideal quick and easy little projects to sew up to sell. So if you enjoyed this video then please do give me a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed down below and I will see you here next time. Bye bye for now.